What's up, New Orleans? Great to be back in the Big Easy. Welcome to the weigh-in. How about a hand for our Octagon girls, Vanessa Hansen and Chrissy Blair. One of the best matchmakers in the world, Sean Shelby. Matt Emmons bringing up the rear. All right, let's get things going. We begin with the UFC Fight Pass prelims. First up in the bantamweight division, Jose Teco Quinones versus Leonardo Jimmy Morales. Wednesday, don't miss UFC tonight as Misha Tate joins Daniel, Kenny, and me. We're going to chat with UFC heavyweight champion Kane Velasquez. Plus, the guy's going to look ahead to next week's UFC 188. UFC tonight is Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern, only on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Well, guys, he is making his bantamweight debut. Dominic, you know more than anyone how hard 135 can be to make. Absolutely. It's not fun. The truth is, I would say he still has a chance to make it because he has two hours. And he technically didn't miss weight unless you miss it in this next two hours. He has to lose it. But three pounds is a lot to cut in that short period of time. So I'm not sure if he'll make that. Jose Quinones, known as Teco, as we call him at Alliance Training Center. He's been coming over to San Diego to work on his grappling. He's got a boxing base from 16 years old, so you know he can move his feet, land solid punches, but the wrestling is something that he's always working on, getting better at, and he's been teaching me a little Spanish. One thirty five for Jose Quinones. All right, moving on now to the middleweight division. Ricardo Dementia Breu versus Jake, the prototype Collier. First fighter to the scale, Jake Collier. Jake Collier enters his second UFC appearance here in New Orleans, but when he's not in the gym or fighting, he said he likes to hang out with his family. He has three boys, very busy. He has a seven-year-old, a three-year-old, and a six-month-old. They love to ride four-wheelers, and he said wiffle ball is their thing. One eighty five and a hook for Jake Collier. And his opponent also making his second UFC appearance, Ricardo Abreu. Sunday, the best drivers in the world head to Pocono to take on the tricky triangle. Sprint Cup racing begins Sunday at 11.30 a.m. Eastern, only on Fox Sports 1. for Ricardo Abreu.
All right, now we get to the Fox Sports 1 UFC Fight Night prelims. First up in the lightweight division, Joe Proctor versus Justin Fast Eddie Edwards. UFC Fight Night returns tomorrow as the explosive Tim Boach takes on UFC legend Dan Henderson. Coverage begins at 8 p.m. Eastern on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. One fifty six for Justin Edwards. And his opponent is Joe Proctor. Representing Pembroke, Massachusetts, and Lozon MMA, Joe Proctor is a very tough and aggressive fighter who definitely fits the mold of a Lozon trained fighter. He was also on the Ultimate Fighter Live edition, and Dominic Cruz actually. Didn't pick him on his team. What's up with that, Dom? One fifty six and a half for Joe Proctor. Six for Joe Proctor. Also in the lightweight division, Chris Wade versus Christos, the Spartan Yagos. First fighter to the scale, please welcome Christos Yagos. Tomorrow, MLB on Fox Sports 1 returns as the Rangers take on the Royals. Then it's Baseball Night in America as the Angels square off against the Yankees. Or the Pirates battle the Braves. Or an AL Central showdown between the Tigers and White Sox. Coverage begins tomorrow on Your Home for Baseball every Saturday on Fox Sports 1 and Fox. 155 and a half. 155 and a half for Christos Yagos. And his opponent, Chris Wade. New York State wrestling champion Chris Wade said he was keeping tabs on guys like Ally Aquinta and Dennis Bermudez well before the UFC. In fact, all three of them in their senior year wrestled in the exact same weight class in New York. Crazy that all three are now in the UFC. One fifty five and a half for Chris Wade.
Monday, the USA women's national team kicks off their quest for a third World Cup title as they take on Australia at 6.30 p.m. Eastern, only on Fox Sports 1. Brian Eversole's chest hair is about as unorthodox as his fighting style. He uses wrestling to get into these fights. He started at the age of five years old and started MMA at the age of 19. He now has over 50 pro fights, and he goes out there every single night trying to keep you guessing, and that's one thing he does better than anybody. And that brings us to our future prelim in the heavyweight division. Sean the Savage Jordan versus Derek the Black Beast Lewis. First fighter to the scale board here in New Orleans. Please welcome the Black Beast. Derek Lewis is a huge heavyweight and a true knockout artist. He actually has a knockout or TKO in all of his wins in his MMA career. Five years ago this month, he also faced Sean Jordan. He lost that one, and he's looking for redemption. For redemption. a number of colleges to play football, Alabama, Oklahoma, Texas, but it was LSU that offered him the scholarship first. He won the national championship in 2003 and in 2007 with the Tigers, and he's thrilled to be back here in Louisiana fighting in front of these fans. can catch the next six main card bouts on Fox Sports 1 tomorrow, leading up to our main event between Hendo and the Barbarian. Up next, Alex Caceres and Francisco Rivera. Ultimate Fighter Season 12's Caceres is up first. Alex Caceres, they call him Bruce Leroy. He's actually on a little bit of a skid right now. He's lost his last two. Uh, this is also another guy who came from the Ultimate Fighter series. Um, pretty unorthodox striker, likes to stand southpaw, but he does have talent, and, and he proved that in, in a big win over Sergio Pettis. A lot of people lose to Uriah Faber. Right, exactly. No, not, not a big deal there. Unless they're fighting for the title. You may think it's a big deal. Think anybody wants to lose today. <laughs> no. Bill, 136. 136 for Alex Caceres. And his opponent currently ranked number 11 in the world, Francisco Rivera. Francisco Rivera started MMA in 2003 after a college football career, actually. 
is unusual, um, but it's worked very well for him. He's currently attempting his bachelor's at the same time as he's fighting. Also hard to do. That's a lot of multitasking you're doing there. Worked at Buena, Buena Park, excuse me, at Parks and Recreation was his job before fighting and football. Looks like he's made some good moves. Coming off a recent loss to Uriah Faber and was doing pretty well, just got bullied into the cage and choked. 136. 136 for Francisco Rivera. I'm looking forward to see how he does against a guy like Bruce Leroy because Leroy's not as physically strong as a lot of the guys that he's faced, but definitely crafty. Good to see him come back from that eye injury, too. And next up, we stay in the bantamweight division. Joe Soto versus Anthony El Toro Burchak. Well, wrestling in college, Anthony Burchak studied fine arts and advertising. He said that's really helped him with his social media and marketing. And though he's in the spotlight here in New Orleans, he wants to turn that to his baby sister, Aviana, who's getting married this weekend. Though he can't be there, he said he knows you're going to make a beautiful bride. This is a guy that's actually from my hometown in Tucson, Arizona, where I was raised. I was born in San Diego, but wrestled alongside Burchak in the Arizona circuit, alongside, uh, you know, the ASU alumni, Velasquez. Nice. Thirty-six. One thirty-six for Anthony Burchak. Also, John Moraga, Henry Cejudo, all and of us his were opponent, in the, he is the Arizona national title team challenger, together. It's pretty Joe interesting how it, how it all flows into MMA from wrestling. You know, a lot of things can change in MMA, and for Joe Soto, it definitely changed for him. Within 24 hours before he was scheduled to fight, an other opponent ended up fighting T.J. Dillashaw for the belt. Actually went uh, all the way to the fifth round. Very impressive. This kid is very tough, very, does a very good job of getting guys to fight his fight. An excellent grappler and uh, big fight here against Bircher. We're working that night when he fought, and I remember we kept saying he's still in it, he's still in yep. it, he's still in it, made it to the fifth round with the champ. He did well surviving until the end. Dillashaw finally was able to set up a finish, but it was an outstanding fight. I'm looking forward to this fight. I think this is a sleeper fight. People are going to maybe look and past next it. Up, don't, we got a good one in fight. the featherweight division. Tiago Tavares versus Brian Two-City Ortega. Brian Ortega has been working with Hunter Gracie to train law enforcement self-defense for events for to go out on his own. He's been with the Gracie since he was 13 years old, and he said every year he continues to evolve because of them. This guy's triangle is serious. It really is. It's one of those triangles that he only has to barely get your head and arm caught in there, and he figures out a way to adjust and he only needs one shot at it, so that, that's rare. Yeah, that's when you know you've mastered a technique is when you know it's coming and you still get caught in. Ortega has that kind of technique on his triangle. It proves by his nickname. Yes. 45. 45. 45. 146. 146 for Brian Ortega. And his opponent making his 16th UFC appearance, Tiago Tavares. Wednesday, don't miss an all-new hard-hitting episode of The Ultimate Fighter at 10 p.m. Eastern and Pacific, only on Fox Sports 1. Tiago's base is actually judo, and that transition into uh, jiu-jitsu by the age of nine, which then he was watching Gracie's fight and compete, and he's like, man, I want to do that. And now here he is making his dreams come true, uh, fighting. And that, that, a lot, a lot of this up right here. 151. Oh, wait, wait. Six. 
146 for Thiago Tavares. Tavares is getting a little nervous. He actually cut from 55 down to 45 and has done really well. Uh, if anybody can stay out of the triangle attempts in this fight, it's going to be Tavares. Very seasoned black belt, tons of experience, also has good boxing. I think we're going to see this fight stay on its feet more than anything uh, because I think that they're just not going to want to make each other comfortable in the grappling aspect. But you never know. I'm hoping to see a ground clinic in this fight, personally. Well, Tiago does have 13 submission wins, so. Yeah, I hope that they go to the ground, because that will be high-level technique you watch in this matchup. And now we get to a feature bout in the lightweight division. Dustin the Diamond Poirier versus Yancy Materis. Yancey Medeiros was actually a painter before he started fighting, which I have in common with him. I used to mix the paint for this guy before he'd go paint the house, so I know how he feels. He has a sneaky guillotine because of those long pipe arms he's got. So you gotta be careful, stick your head in there and forcing takedowns. Uh, he used to weigh 245 pounds, and wow. now look at him, in shape, fighting. Well, and he credits. He's still, he's still. Let's make sure he makes the weight here. 159 and a half oh. for Yancey Medeiros. Oh, he will have until pounds. 6 p.m. local no, time to pounds. cut the final three and a half pounds. And that's his rough. opponent representing Lafayette, Louisiana. Please welcome Dustin the Diamond Poirier. Dustin Poirier, a guy who's coming up from 145 pounds, and I guarantee you he will not be happy with Yancey Medeiros after he weighs in. And you can hear the crowd going nuts fighting for the first time in the UFC in front of his hometown. And you will see a very fired up Dustin Poirier tomorrow night. And of course, if Yancey doesn't make the weight, he'll be giving up 20% of his purse, but he's got a couple of hours to get there. Yeah, three and a half pounds is, is kind of a lot. It almost seems like, uh, you know, he kind of gave up there. <laughs> Definitely curious Dustin to see how Poirier. Poirier handles this. I mean, we saw his fight with Connor, and Connor kind of got in his head a little bit, and I think that's going to teach him every other fight after that's going to be a little easier to deal with mentally. Well, he bounced back from that and, you know, has been looking good. And, right. you know, really does credit that, too, to coming up in weight. Says he's just happier and he's having fun again. Good. good. I like the move to 155. He looks happier. I mean, right now he looks happier. And now we sure. get to the co-main event in the heavyweight division, Ben Rothwell versus Matt Mitrio. Matt Mitrion started his football career at Purdue and then went on to play six seasons in the NFL. He's used that athleticism that he built in that career, translating it straight over to MMA. He knows he's fast, he knows he's strong, and he knows he's explosive with good, fluent athleticism and movement. So he uses that against these heavyweights and hopes for the speed advantage. Eight of 12 fights have been won by knockout, so that tells you a lot about his power. And once again, folks, Kenny Florian has bet Dominic a dozen donuts. That's right. And if this fight goes the distance. The world, the and I really do. I'm with Kenny. I think this Rockwell. one's going to be getting shut down pretty quick. <laughs> <laughs> and regards to those quick fights, Ben Rothwell actually has 25 finishes in the first round, guys. So uh, this is definitely one of those fights you do not want to blink when you're watching. He has a total of 27 wins by knockout. Uh, again, a, a fun one. He loves that uppercut. Yes. And he's trying to contend with Ebersol, looks like, in the hair department there. 265 on the nose for Ben Rockwell. Rothwell's somewhat the quieter guy of the two, that's for sure. So you might sleep on him, but don't, because he has heavy power and a lot of experience. All right, 22 fighters down, two to go. It is now time to take a closer look at the two men who share the marquee for tomorrow night's middleweight main event. Take a look. With Dan Henderson, it just takes one shot for him to take you out, and he still has that power. Oh, huge right hand for Hendo! Dan Henderson! 
anyone in the world knows there's going to be a big right hand looking to land on my chin the whole time. Oh, goodness! And that's something that I've been training for since I found out I was fighting Dan. To beat Dan Henderson is going to be one of the biggest things I've ever done. He's been an idol for me. He's fought the toughest guys in the sport and beat him. He just goes in and imposes his will. And that's the type of fighter I've always wanted to be. It's pretty neat, I guess, to have guys look up to you. It's not something I'll be thinking about when we're out there fighting. Tim's been around a little while now in the UFC. He's just a scrappy guy that you can never count out of a fight. Tim Bosch is a big middleweight who's been in there against some of the best guys in the division and has shown incredible durability. He showed that in the fight against Yushin Okami, which is one of the best comeback victories I've ever seen inside the octagon. He highlighted the grit and determination that Tim Bosch has. When you look at his style of fighting and Dan Henderson's style of fighting, I can't imagine how this fight wouldn't be a knockdown, drag out war. This is a unique situation for the fans because our wrestling background, some people might expect us to go that route, but I don't think we're going to. Very aggressive strikes. My ability to absorb punishment is better than his at this point in our careers, and I will finish it. Bosch gets the knockout! Wrestlers are tough to fight, and I'm hoping that they can stop the takedowns and knock the crap out of them on our feet. First fighter to the scale, the former Pride 2 Division champion, former Strike Force champion, the legend Dan Hendo Henderson! Dan, Dan Henderson, a real legend in the game. This is a guy who has one of the nastiest right hands in all of mixed martial arts. Guy who can knock you out all the way as heavy as heavyweight. Almost did it against Fedor Emelianenko, or he did do it against Fedor Emelianenko, and can't wait for this. 186 for Dan Henderson! And his opponent making his 17th UFC appearance, his first UFC headliner, please welcome Tim the Barbarian Boach! Barbarian Tim Boach looked up to Dan Henderson most of his career. I mean, he's a four-time state champ, so you know he was watching Henderson wrestle. Um, he's got his nickname because of his fight style. He pretty much uses a chest push to an overhand right to a left hook as a combination. That kind of is his bar barbarian style. But he is educated, graduated from Lock Haven, Pennsylvania with a degree in criminal justice. 185 and a half for Tim Bush. What do you think about all the respect he has for Henderson? Uh, does that affect anything, Kenny? Yeah, he's got to make sure he gets that completely out of his mind on fight night. Doesn't want to, you know, you want to respect your opponent's skills, but not respect their strategy, not respect them too much where you don't show up as a fighter, so. Will this stare down say anything right now? Let's yeah, see. Yeah, we're going to find out. out. And with that, the main event is official. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for coming out. We'll see you right back here for the fights tomorrow night.